James here at Anya North America. In this video, I'll show you the working components of the front end of the hammer. First, we're going to take a Sharpie and mark the stuffing box flange and this top cap. It is always good practice to make reference marks so that you can put the parts back into the hammer the same way they came from the factory. Next, we remove the uh, top cylinder cap. I'm using a 3H drive 16 millimeter socket. Now that we have removed all of the nuts, it's time to take off this top cap and the gasket material. Now that we've removed the top cap, it's time to pull this ram out. Now that we've gotten the ram out, Notice these two holes that are drilled and tapped to the top of the ram. This is so that you could bolt a fixture to the top, making it easier, especially on our larger hammers, to remove the ram. Next, we remove the nuts that hold in the stuffing box. Now that we've removed all of the stuffing box nuts, it's time to remove the stuffing box. Just lightly turning it. I'd like to take a minute and talk about the importance of never running the hammer without proper dies installed. I've seen this on a few disturbing videos of hammers ran without the dies chucked in. What happens is this belt out section of the ram will bottom out on the stuffing box and can rip the studs damaging the threads that are tapped into the frame. Also keep this in mind if you are making your own custom dies. Removing the ram rings is very simple. I slide these shims in between the ram and the rings, which expands the rings so they can slip right out. Installing them is the same procedure, but in reverse. On the inside of the stuffing box is a series of metal seals. They are similar to the ram rings, however they contract or squeeze the ram. To remove the metal seals, start by removing the stuffing box assembly pins. This is a close-up view of the inside of the stuffing box, the sealing system. As you can see, we have four different wipers, two stuffing box assembly pins, and a retaining spring. The last section of the stuffing box are the two guide plates. Both guide plates are held in place by two countersunk bolts. These guide plates are a part of the bearing surfaces for the ram. As you can see here, they mate with the machine flat sides of the ram. Now that we've taken apart the wipers and the guide plates, it's time to put everything back together. First we start with the guide plates. They fit right in just the way they came out. I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite before we put our fasteners on. Start with your lock washer and put your bolt back on. Next, we're going to assemble the wipers to the stuffing box. Got to make sure our retaining spring is nice and seated. I'm aligning one hole with the other and using this stuffing box pin as sort of a keeper. Okay. Next, we install the flat sides. Notice this machine groove goes right back into the retaining spring. And it helps if you don't have two people to have a, a light clamp. You don't have to go super tight. And then now for the other side. Same thing, same process. And then the final wiper. A 
And here again, just like the first wiper, we're going to use this little assembly pin, stuffing box pin, to hold the final part in place. And there's threads that are cut that we can kind of lightly seat. And uh, now that we've got the wipers all installed, uh, it's time to tighten down these stuffing box pins, the assembly pins. Um, I just want to make a quick note. Notice how all of these are kind of floating and held together by that retaining spring. Uh, there's absolutely no binding. Um, everything kind of moves freely. Uh, just before we put everything back together, I'm going to use a little Loctite. Just a drop or two. And uh, when we get all these screwed in, you want to go just below flush. If you go too far down, you'll find that it'll act kind of like a set screw and it can uh, bind the wiper. You want it just, you know, a 30 second or so flush. Before we begin reassembly, let's take a closer look at this design. As you can see with the sealing system, there is no rubber, plastic, or leather. This system will give you years of trouble-free service. Another great design aspect is this RAM. The RAM is a true free-floating design. There is a lot of work that goes into manufacturing this RAM. They are forged, machined, then heat treated at the Anyang factory. Next step, we're going to install this stuffing box. Now, it's really easy to get this turned this way or this way, you know, and that's why at the very beginning of this video we marked the stuffing box flange, and I'm just going to kind of lightly chuck it into the hammer, and uh, I've got a mark right, right where the flange meets the hammer, and so I know that's exactly the way it was put in or installed by the factory. And we're just going to get one bolt on. Just get it kind of hand tight. One more on the other side. And then continue to do this for all eight studs. Now that we've lightly, loosely installed the stuffing box, all of these are hand tight. And uh, the reason we hand tighten those is so once we get the ram and everything back into place, it gives me a little bit of adjustment for final alignment. Now it's time to install the ram. Note that uh, I'm going to line these fl machine flat spots up with the guide plates to the stuffing box. I also know that it gets installed on this side because of the slide lock to the die. Always goes on this side of the hammer. I'm just going to carefully lower it in. The next step is to compress the rings so the rest of the ram can slide back into the cylinder. But before we do this, we need, we need to make sure that both the ring gaps are pointing towards the front of the hammer and are offset. Next we're going to start by compressing these rings. Find just by working across with uh, a screwdriver going back and forth to the to, from the studs. Just going to use a soft mallet to kind of tap it. So now we've got the ram back into the cylinder. Uh, you've got a good viewing of this buffer valve. What the buffer valve does is keep the ram from colliding with the top cap when it's returning back up. It forms sort of like a uh, air cushion. Also note that this, this cutout is a top valve port. That's why we, we wanted the piston rings pointing towards the front of the cylinder so that the ring gaps would never get hung up on this. And uh, right before we drop everything down and install these, I'm going to uh, 
pour a few ounces of oil so that I know that my top rings are going to seal immediately. So we've put this uh, rubberized gasket material back on and I'm looking for my marks that I made earlier in the video, lining those up so it goes back in the same way it came from the factory. Then we start putting our washers and all the nuts back together again. Now I've got the top cap back on, I've got everything pretty close to just hand tight. I'm going to start doing the final tightening. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is that here again you always want to go backwards, side to side, kind of like a, a wheel on a car. Okay, So we've tightened up these bolts, we've got the top cap back on, we've got the ram installed. I can tell by my die alignment, everything is lining up good. The next step is just to do the final tightening on these stuffing box bolts. And as I'm doing this here again, I'm going crisscross pattern, just like a car wheel. Uh, and you only want to go about a quarter to a half turn each time. The reason for this is you want to make sure that as this is getting chucked into that cylinder that it doesn't get binded. Everything lines up perfectly. Now that we've tightened up all the stuffing box bolts, it's time we fire up the hammer and make sure that we're getting good throttle response, good control, and the ram retracts back into the cylinder. I hope this video gave you a good perspective of how the front end of the Anyang hammer works. In our next video, we are going to discuss the valve assembly. Thank you for taking the time and watching this video.